Hey folks, Daniel here. This is video number 50 for the series that corresponds to the book, Road of Happy Destiny. And today I want to talk to you about the love of God and how to love God in return and what that kind of looks like. Now, I want to start by talking about how there is a hell. There is an, etern an infinitely opposite place of God an infinitely opposite place of where God is. And it had to be that way. God didn't want it to be that way, but when when evil became known, when evil was developed, um, God had to create a place for that evil to go to. Because if this is perfect God, and this is not the enemy, just being in pro proximity one to the other makes both imperfect. So it would have undone existence, it would have undone God, it would have undone everything um, had God not made an infinitely opposite place for evil and uncleanness to go to. So God didn't have a whole lot of option there. Um, he doesn't want any of his creation to perish. He's not an evil God. He's not an angry God is so much anymore. I mean, he's upset, obviously, with the condition of the world, but he's not... So, he's not unloving in any way. He's, he is love. He loves us desperately. And he wants us to be with him. So, God tells us in, through Christ, Christ as God says, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, that's how you show me you love me. This, because again, love is an action. It's not just an emotion. We feel love. We feel to, you know, we know what it's like to feel in love. We know what it's like to have love for uh, our favorite whatever, or love for our our child, we understand the emotion of that, yes. But it's also two other things. It's an ability and it's an action. God is concerned with the action at the most of the time. He wants, I mean, he's concerned with all the facets of love, of course he is. But for this, this, for the sake of discussion, we're talking about behaviors and actions. God wants us to love him by following his commandments by appreciating him and by loving one another because as it says in scripture first of all love God with all your heart mind soul and strength love your neighbor as yourself and if you don't know how to love yourself that's kind of an issue right well learn how to love God and then apply that to people around you um, I struggled with the concept of self-love for a long time because I didn't really love myself I kind of thought myself to be kind of less than and Kind of, uh, just, I was, I was a junkie. I mean, I was a drunk. I was homeless. I was messing my life all up. Um, you know, for mo for the majority of my life, messing it up. I always, my whole mo from day one is always to have been service to of to have been of service to other people, to this country, to the people around me, to my community, to my family, my friends, and my acquaintances and uh, affiliates. All of them, I wanted to be of service because that's where I found my value. Um, but I didn't know how to be those things for myself because if I could I would do it by myself and I would be completely and utterly alone but anyway I want to move on a little bit and um, I'm starting to have notes a little bit more often so you'll see me glance at these a little bit again it says um, in scripture that if you love me keep my commandments love God and love your neighbor as yourself right we've talked about that now God wants us to love him Emotionally as well, we want to feel that he wants us to be able to experience the emotion of loving him. But because that's a, it's a foreign thing, we don't know God as well as we would like to. In order to be able to have a better relationship with him and love him more, uh, we do that by reading the scriptures and slowly over time developing that relationship with him. Um, but because there's a little bit of distance there, um, cognitively for one and not so much physically or you know geographically but there's some distance in comprehension of who God is and how great and holy he truly is that we a lot for me at least I, I say we but I mean I'm talking about me I struggle with understanding God well enough to love him the way that he deserves to be loved um, anyways God wants us to love him because he loves us he wants that reciprocated because he wants to be with us. Don't you want to be with your family? Don't you want to be with your children? Of course you do. But there's that other place that's infinitely opposite of the presence of God. He doesn't want us to go there. 
He wants us to be with Him. But in order to be with Him that way, we have to believe in Him and to love Him. And to love Him means following His commandments. So if following His commandments is to love Him, and following the commandments, and in a combination with believing, sends us to heaven with Him, ah, yes, that's the whole point. Love God by following the commandments and believing in Him. So that He can love you back. He can't love you back in a way that you'll receive that when you're infinitely opposite of where he's at. So, we're loving God because he loves us. He commands us to love him by following his commandments so he can be with us, so he can love us back. He wants to love us back. And to love him, for us to love him with our behavior and wherever possible our emotions and our actions too. Actions, behavior, same thing I know. Okay, moving on. Um, if we love him, we will be with him in eternity, uh, where he can love us and us him in the purest, most glorious ways. Even look at Zephaniah 317, I love this verse. It talks about how um, God rejoices over us singing. He loves his creation, each individual of it, so much that he sings songs of praise back to us. Not songs of worship, but songs of praise back to us. Imagine the next time you're listening to the Christian radio station and a song comes on in that particular perspective where we're praising him. Imagine him singing the same words back to us. I know that's far out there, but it says in scripture that's basically what he does. Not spot on, but pretty darn close. He might change a few words here and there, but he praises us. He's proud of us. He is glad for us. He saved the world through Noah so that he could save us again through himself, through Christ. Because he made us and he, just, and he saw that it was good and he never let go of that. He held on to the hope. He held on to the faith of us, towards us, out of love. And the faith that someday mankind and his creation of it was going to be redeemed and restored because of Jesus. So he's praising that, and he is praiseworthy, so he absolutely deserves, because of what his sacrifice, to save us, to love us, to be with us, so he could love us. And all, we, all he's asking us to do is just follow the guidebook, just try to do the right thing, the next right thing, that's all it is. We make mistakes every day, we're going to, we're human beings, we have a sinful nature, we are inherently good and mostly good, but we have a sinful nature as well, and we need to keep that under wraps. Not under wraps, but under control, rather. Okay. Um, and that's kind of really all I had to say with this video is just I wanted to push home that God loves us desperately. He wants us to love him as much as he loves us, but that's not going to happen until we are aware more fully of who he is and how glorious he is and his holy, 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 like the angels around his throne. Some have asked the question, what's the first thing you're going to ask God when you see him? I'm not going to ask him anything. Probably not initially. What are the first three words we might say? Now, this is a shout out to that line of Judah channel again, but... They argue that we're probably going to say holy, holy, holy. I think I'm going to say thank you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate you being a part of this ministry, uh, being affected by it and helping to share these videos. Uh, please do subscribe. Um, if you don't have too much going on already in your subscriptions and your library and all this, please do subscribe. It's very helpful. Uh, you don't have to forgive the shadow here. But anyway, I just want to say that it is my sincerest prayer in this moment that God bless you continually and abundantly beyond what you already deserve, that he bring redemption and restoration into your life, that you enjoy the rest of this day and the rest of this week, and that you just continue to spread the message and be the good stewards of the gifts you've been given that you are. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.